and all the others together with them took unto themselves wives. And each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's who consumed all the acquisitions of men and when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. So what I have just read is a translation of a verse from the book of Enoch. Now, I do understand that many people consider the book of Enoch as a book of mythology and not inspired by God in the canon of biblical scriptures. And so when we get to the part about giants or the Nephilim, the Raphaim in the Bible, King Og would have been the tallest one by description. And we're talking about 11, 12 feet tall. And that is just a guess because we don't really know how tall King Og was, just the size of his bed. Also, being a descendant of the Raphites, it's the same with Goliath, although his height is written at around nine feet. And there are other calculations of this, just like there are several versions of the height of the giants in the Book of Enoch. One says that they were 300 cubits, which is 450 feet. Another says 3,000 L's, which is over two miles tall. One says 3,000 cubits, which is 4,500 feet tall. Noah's Ark was supposedly 300 cubits or 450 feet long. And then, of course, you will hear that pre-flood giants being 20 to 40 feet tall is more reasonable than the other two very high numbers 450 feet is very tall but two miles high is a titan so first of all there is no way on the planet for anyone to come forward and prove that any books of the bible were truly inspired by god at all and we, of course, all know this. That's why it's called faith. So we can accept it as truth, right? As there still remains much mystery. I mean, we all know where the Bible is sourced from. And not all of that content is in the Bible, right? We don't have writings from Jesus, just the gospels of his teachings written by others. Now the days of the pre-flood giants is over. However, their spirits may have never left. Their fathers, the watchers, are bound or imprisoned. But there still remains the fallen armies of Satan. Now I know that everyone has their own opinion about the watchers and the giants. I myself am still trying to figure it all out. And with all these variations, it can get quite confusing indeed. And I think since the forces of darkness can no longer prevent the birth of Christ, they are determined to prevent us from just being human. Now, many of you probably have no idea how many ancient writings mention giants. I mean, aside from the main texts we've heard of like Genesis, the book of Enoch, the book of giants, the book of Jubilees, etc. There are also fragments of texts about them. I think the two biggest questions here is exactly how can this be done? 
How can human women give birth to giants? And how tall could one of these giants possibly be? The thing is, most people who think about giants in the Bible think about someone the size of Goliath. They're not thinking about something the size of a titan described in Greek mythology. But there are a few who do. What is interesting to note is the early writings of historical authors about these ancient texts that reference giants. And it is insightful to get a take on all this from a person that lived around the first century BC or the first century AD. For example, Tertullian, born in 160 AD, a Christian author from Carthage in the Roman province of Africa. He wrote that, there are carcasses of the giants of old time. It will be obvious enough that they are not absolutely decayed, for their bony frames are still extant. For instance, even lately in this very city, which would be Carthage in Africa, which is right across the water from Sicily. When they were sacrilegiously laying the foundations of the Odium on a good many ancient graves, people were horror-stricken to discover, after some 500 years, bones, which still retained their moisture, and hair which had not lost its perfume. It is certain not only that bones remained underrated, but also that teeth continued undecayed for ages both, of them, the lasting germs of that body which is to sprout into life again in the resurrection. Yes, in Carthage, Africa, there is the Roman theater of Carthage. And right next to it is the described Odium, which is a Roman building for musical performances. And right next to that is an archaeological site. And I'm sure that whatever Tertullian was describing is gone. Earth brought forth giants who were matchless in the bulk of their bodies and invincible in their might, with terrible aspect. Some say they were born at Flegra, Italy, which is actually a volcano west of Naples, but, according to others in Fallen, Greece, which I believe is in Athens, Zeus killed them with thunderbolts and Heracles shot them with arrows. Athena threw Sicily on top of the giant Enceladus, while Poseidon broke off part of Kos and heaped it into the giant Polyboats. Typhon surpassed all the offspring of earth. As far as the thighs, he was of human shape and of prodigious bulk. Zeus fought him from Syria to Thrace and finally buried Typhon under Mount Etna, Sicily. Now that comes from the Apollodorus Library of the first century CE which was credited to Apollodorus of Athens. Apollodorus of Athens, son of Asclepiades, was a Greek scholar, historian, and grammarian. He was a pupil of Diogenes of Babylon, Panaetius the Stoic, and the grammarian Aristarchus of Samothrace, under whom he appears to have studied together with his contemporary Dionysus Thrax. Man, these Greek names are killing me with these pronunciations here. Anyway, the giants were men of immense bodies, whose bones of enormous size are still shown in certain places for confirmation of their existence. And this comes from Clement of Rome, 96 CE, who was the Pope Bishop of Rome in the late first century. Historians of Chios, assert that near Mount Pelanius, in a wooden glen, there was a dragon of gigantic size who made the Chian shudder. No farmer or shepherd dared approach the monster's lair. But a miraculous event allowed the discovery of how large it really was. During a violent lightning storm, a forest fire destroyed the entire region of the wooded slopes. After the fire, all the Chians came to see and discovered the bones of gigantic size and a terrifying skull. From these, the villagers were able to imagine how large and terrible the brute was when alive. And the Greek island of Chios is quite the mountainous region, by the way. Euphorion says, 
that in primeval times, Samos was uninhabited except for animals of gigantic size, which were savage and dangerous, called neads. Now these animals with their mere roaring split the ground. So there is a proverbial saying in Samos, so and so roars louder than the neads. And Yerfurion asserts that their huge remains are displayed even to this day. Samos, which is a small island of ruins and beaches further south of Chios. And that's from Claudius Elianus, another Roman author. Again, they keep saying the same thing, that the remains of these monsters is still on display. Now, there are monsters mentioned in the Bible like Leviathan. Those authors or historians that I mentioned were not idiots. Why would they subscribe to fairy tales? So, how many of you, be honest, not only believe that giants existed, but that dragons existed as well? Do we have visual evidence of their existence hidden in plain sight? It's like you can't see the forest from the trees, right? So maybe you can't see the carcasses of giants if you are too close or right on top of them. I mean, you can go watch videos on petrified giants and it really gets you thinking, even though you know that many of these things can be explained away as optical illusions or tricks of the eye. Okay, so here's the theory. Or should I say one of the theories is that we have direct evidence of giants. We have fossil evidence of giants. And interestingly enough, there is an example of this. It also happens to be one of the extinct species of animals that scientists want to bring back to life for some reason. The mastodon. So this should keep you guys busy for a while. So how many of you think that this could be a giant made to look like an animal on all fours? Never mind the skull, the tusk, or the tail, because much of the time, they don't find the skull. It's commonly crushed and destroyed by geological events. So what you end up finding are enormous human-like bones, ribs, and vertebrae. And so they say, oh... Ancient Greeks didn't know what they were talking about. These are just giant elephants. Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me a place that gave birth to masters of science, art, writing, and technology, some of the greatest philosophers and teachers, and some of the greatest kingdoms and civilizations to ever exist, you're telling me that they didn't know what they were talking about when it came to identifying bones? There was a time or an event called the Giant Tamaki. The Giant Tamaki was probably the most important battle that happened in Greek mythology. It was a fight between the giants or gigantes, sons of Gaia or Uranus, and the Olympian gods who were trying to overthrow the old religion and establish themselves as the new rulers of the cosmos. Doesn't that story sound familiar? It sounds like the Clash of the Titans or War of the Giants described in the Book of Enoch. According to the most detailed source for this battle, what started the war was the giant Alcyonius stealing the cattle of God Helios. A prophecy had it that the giants would only be defeated if a mortal was to help the gods. To protect her children, Gaia tried to find a plant that would shield the giants from any harm. However, Zeus stopped Eos, Selene, and Helios from shining and took every single plant for himself. When the battle began, Heracles fought Alcyonius. However, the giant would not die as long as he stepped on the soil of his homeland. With Athena's advice, Heracles dragged Alcyonius away from his homeland and killed him. The other giants had similar fates. Dionysus killed Eurydice, Athena buried in Calatus under Sicily, Hermes killed Hippolytus, and so on. Many of the giants were buried under islands. In fact, 
It was believed that the earthquakes and the volcanic eruptions were caused when the giants moved in their tombs. Now, according to legend, apparently there are all types of titans and monsters beneath Mount Etna, which is also Tartarus, the underworld, the titan's prison, their tomb. A quite active stratovolcano, by the way, meaning there are layers of sediment from years of eruptions. There is one monster that I found to be interesting, and it turns out it was the greatest beast to ever emerge from the earth. He was by far the largest of all mythical creatures. Typhon was a giant who was as tall as the stars. His hands stretched east and west, and instead of a human head, he had a hundred dragon heads that erupted from his neck and shoulders. His bottom half were gigantic viper coils that when stretched out fully could reach the top of his head and made a constant hissing sound. His entire body was covered in wings and his eyes flashed with fire. Typhon was so powerful that he struck fear into the Olympian gods. As well as being a monster, Typhon was a god. He was the last son of Gaia and Tartarus. Both Gaia and Tartarus were deities and considered to be all powerful gods. So you can see in this movie still by the way, this is a shot from Godzilla, King of Monsters, 2019. This is King Ghidorah, who has been a part of the Godzilla universe since the 60s. And you see by description that this is a clear representation of Typhon, standing right on a volcano. Now, if you are wondering why there is a cross in this shot, I don't know. I mean, I could guess why they threw that in there. Christ and the dragon. Zeus is always battling Typhon in these stories. And one, it was thought that Typhon was created to be able to stand up against Zeus. Now, what's interesting about Zeus is that Zeus is actually Jupiter, the supreme god of the Hellenic Greeks and Romans and the antithesis of Jehovah. And this god is mentioned in biblical scriptures. There are stories that Zeus, Dionysus, and Athena were the only Olympian gods that remained as the others changed into animals to hide from Typhon. Zeus struck Typhon with 100 lightning bolts, and Typhon was stunned and trapped at that point. So Zeus threw Typhon into the Tartarus pit and then covered the pit with Mount Etna so that Typhon could never escape. Legend has it that Typhon is always trying to break free from his prison. And every time the mountain shakes, every time there is an eruption, that's Typhon trying to make his escape. Are we standing on the graveyard of giants? Were there so many that they decided to hide the truth by just presenting these things to us as ancient beasts? biggest dinosaur ever discovered and this was published back in 2019 based on the thigh bone this creature was about 130 feet long and on all fours would have been 65 feet tall they found 150 bones and even in this article they state that based on very fragmentary specimens no complete skeleton is known which means the animal's proportions and overall shape are conjectural. Which simply means that they are guessing. And while the institution sends teams to go dig this stuff up after it's been discovered, none of these scientists, while their colleagues are around, would ever guess in the direction of this fossil not being a dinosaur. Well, lizard or not, Whatever this thing was, I'm sure it was pretty terrible. That's all for now, folks. Stay tuned as there is more to come. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at J-A-E Woodward. Everyone have a great day or evening. And as always, friends, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, 
and I'll talk to you all soon.